Hey everyone, David Chen here. Let's talk about Lee Isaac Chung's new film, Minari, which you can rent right now on video on demand. Minari tells the story of Jacob, a Korean American father played by Steven Yun, and his wife Monica, played by Han Yuri, who try to forge some version of the American dream with their two kids in rural Arkansas. You see, they've given up city living, and Jacob has led them out there in the hopes of starting a farming business with a relatively large piece of land they now own, although uh, apparently the last person who tried to start one on that same piece of land didn't do so hot. Now, in order to talk about this movie, I need to talk a little bit about my own life. Uh, my parents are immigrants. They came to this country decades ago uh, looking for a better life for themselves and primarily for their kids, myself and my brother. They barely understood English, but they learned. They learned from context. They joined their community. They assimilated. My dad worked his way up from being a waiter all the way to becoming an owner of a Chinese restaurant uh, that sometimes myself and my brother would be cashiers at. My brother and I became part of the family business, and in the end, uh, things ended up kind of working out for us. You know, my parents were able to save up enough money to buy a house, uh, which is a huge deal. Uh, my brother ended up getting jobs at large tech companies, which is not something I'd ever would have imagined could happen. And I now host a YouTube channel where my videos get dozens of views. Dozens. So I don't know if we've quite lived the American dream, but maybe we've ended up living out some version of it. And even though my thoughts on America are deeply ambivalent these days, especially everything that's happened over the course of the last few years uh, and this rash of anti-Asian violence that's happening, uh, America is still a place that's given me a lot and that we, uh, my family, have given a lot back to. And that context is just important when I'm talking about a movie like this one, Minari. I found Minari to be a captivating movie. I thought it was lyrical and deeply felt and gorgeously photographed. And I would recommend it to anybody who wants to understand what it's like to be an immigrant in this country. There are a couple issues I had with the film. Uh, for example, Steven Yeun, amazing actor, loved him in movies like Burning, and he does a great job here, but if you're a native Korean speaker, I think you'll probably be able to hear and know that he's not a native Korean speaker, and so uh, that might be a challenge if you wanna be like immersed in this story. I also thought the ending of the movie, Minari, was a little bit muddled in terms of the message it was trying to send, uh, perhaps a little bit clunky. But other than those things, this movie does something really extraordinary, which is it presents a side of the American dream that we usually don't see. It's not about the success of the American dream, it's about the struggle. And I think that's something that's important for people to see as well. So before I continue my thoughts about Minari, I do wanna say I'm gonna spoil the film. So if you don't want to be spoiled in the movie, watch the movie Minari, rent it, buy it, whatever is available at the time you're watching this video, come back and let's talk a little bit more about Minari. I wanna point out three things about this film that I thought were pretty interesting. First, I think it completely nails many aspects of the Asian American experience. Now, I do wanna call out that I am Taiwanese American and uh, the people depicted in this film are Korean American. So uh, obviously there are many, many differences, but there are also a lot of similarities and I'm gonna name just a couple of them. There's a scene in the movie where uh, Monica is cleaning out her child's ear uh, with like a wooden stick that has a scoop at the end of it. And uh, this is a thing that uh, a lot of Asian American households have. They have this little tool and like the cleaning out of the ear, it's like a very kind of intimate thing that parents do with their children. Uh, it's a thing that's like just quite common in other parts of the world, but not here. And so to see it reflected on screen is like, oh, that's that's interesting to, to see this kind of level of bonding that you don't normally see in a movie happen in American film. In the movie, Jacob and Monica's child, David, has this heart condition. And so his grandmother brings him this broth that is like pitch black. And it has all these different herbs that she's obtained from different plants and animals and what have you. And they ask him to drink it because they think that it will make him feel better. And uh, he does, and it tastes absolutely foul. And this is something that I had in my household as well. Sometimes when I was sick, my mom would say, hey, here's some black broth uh, of indeterminate origin, drink this. And it's kind of an illustration of the ways in which uh, the old life uh, that people used to have in the country they came from can intrude or intersect with the new life. Is like you're trying out 
uh, Eastern medicine instead of Western medicine. And to kids who are born in America or to kids who immigrated to America who are young, it can be very disorienting and alienating. And uh, I think that's what happens in the movie. And that's what happened with me when I was drinking black broth as a kid as well. One last detail I'll bring up is in Minari, the grandmother of the kids, uh, Monica's mom, played by Young Ja Yoon, comes to spend time with them, to watch over the kids, to take care of them. And this is something that happened when I was a kid. My parents brought their parents to take care of us and uh, live with us. And it wasn't until I watched this movie that I realized a couple things. Number one, how valuable that must have been to my parents to uh, have a connection back to home. You know, there's a scene in Minari when uh, Monica starts crying because her mom has brought all these gifts from, uh, from home, uh, like anchovies, and she starts weeping over anchovies because... Uh, you miss so many parts of home that you don't have access to when you're in America. When I was growing up, America was all I knew, and I didn't fully understand how much of a leap it must have been for both my parents to come here and also for their parents to come over here to take care of us. You know, staying in a, in a country they didn't know or understand, where they didn't really speak the language at all, uh, even less than my parents, must have been extremely challenging. It must have been very comforting for my parents. Uh, and it's something that the kids in Minari and also obviously me in real life, we didn't really understand back in the day. But it is now something I recognize as a profound act of compassion. And it is something I think back on uh, those times that my brother and I spent with my grandparents quite fondly now. So overall, I really loved all these little touches about the Asian American experience. Uh, and again, it's not monolithic, but it matches parts of my experience uh, that we got to see on screen. And I hope when people see it, they can maybe understand Asian Americans like myself a little bit better. The second thing I wanna bring up is this idea of the American dream as something that can be extremely destructive and self-destructive. In the film, Jacob is shown pursuing his dreams, owning land, uh, growing fruits and vegetables, growing Korean fruits and vegetables, selling those Korean fruits and vegetables uh, to take advantage of the huge influx of Koreans that's happening at this time in the country's history. But while we can admire Jacob's entrepreneurship, we can also see that this is an extremely economically punishing and potentially impossible task. He has, during the course of this movie, developed a deeper connection and love for this version of the American dream than he even has for his family. And that's something I think we're meant to understand as really tragic and sad. Because the fact of the matter is not every attempt at the American dream succeeds. We are privy to and often hear about these successes. Uh, we praise them in newspaper stories and we see them on social media, but we don't really hear as often about the failures, about the people who had to return to their country of origin, who went bankrupt, uh, who are forcibly removed from this country, we don't usually hear about those stories and what happens to those people after the dream fails. Because the dream, uh, while it can drive people, it can drive them to achieve great things. It can also drive them to do terrible things like forsake one's family or spend all your money on something that is ultimately not going to succeed or to forget about your humanity and compassion. All these things can be kind of caught up in this idea of the dream. And another thing about that dream that I think this movie really does a good job of depicting is it can be profoundly lonely. You're in this country all by yourself. You have very little social support network to fall back on. And you're moving forward not even understanding if this path is going to work out. And that's one of the things that Minari brings to life so well. One of the issues I had with the film is that I think the ending is a little bit clunky. Uh, Jacob and Monica have had a tense discussion about Jacob's willingness to be part of the family or his willingness to pursue this dream instead of being with the family. And it doesn't go well, but then he literally watches his dream go up in flames. Uh, it's a little bit on the nose, in my opinion. Uh, but I do like, again, what this movie is saying about the American dream. It's not always a success. It can often be a spectacular failure. Final thing I want to share about this movie is there is a scene in this movie that takes place in a church. Uh, Jacob and Monica take their family to the church. And their son, David, has an interaction with a white boy 
who comes up to him and says, why is your face so flat? And David responds, it's not. And this is like a brief moment in the movie. It takes like 10 seconds, but there's a lot to unpack in this scene because uh, they are in this environment where they're kind of experiencing these microaggressions, but they don't understand that they're microaggressions. And as I'm watching this movie, I'm thinking back to like when my parents were raising us and they probably experienced tons of microaggressions and like didn't understand them to be microaggressions because they had other things on their mind. Like they were, they were like, Hey, these people are actually in general nice. You know, they don't need to worry about anything else. And I think that's what plays out in this church scene as well. Uh, but the scene with David and this other white kid that comes up to him and says like, your face is flat. Like, why is it so flat? And he's like, it's not. Uh, because the thing is to David, his face is not flat, right? It's this other guy's face that has features that are extremely pronounced. And the thing that's at stake in this scene is whose experience is centered, whose experience is perceived to be the norm. And um, for David, uh, it's his experience. And for uh, white people, it can often be their experience. And like Asians are the other. And this scene, I think, illustrates a dynamic that continues in America to today, which is that uh, there is power in whose experience is centered and whose experience is considered the norm. And often Asian Americans are considered other, even if they are Americans. Just take the example of the film Minari, which recently won the best foreign language Golden Globe. Uh, a lot of the film does take place in Korean, but these are Korean Americans speaking the language and it is a movie that was made by an American and that was made in America. And that ultimately is a challenge that I think Asian Americans face that I think this movie does a great job at illustrating, which is that uh, Asian Americans can feel like foreigners in this land, which is their home. And if they return home to Korea or China or Taiwan, uh, that can feel like a foreign place as well because they've not grown up in this place. They don't know this place. Asian Americans can often feel like people without a place, uh, profoundly alienated from both this country and also their home country. And that's something that I think Minari does a great job of illustrating. In closing, the movie is named after Minari, a plant that the grandmother in the film plants along the side of a creek. Uh, and the, the family is able to watch grow and actually enjoy as time goes on. It's something that you can use to cook dishes or that makes a nice accompaniment. This plant can thrive in the most unexpected and inhospitable of conditions. And despite that, it can thrive and be surprising. And that's ultimately what this movie is about. It's about uh, immigrants. It's about Korean Americans, it's about Asian Americans being able to thrive despite everything that's happening and the beauty that can be found in that. I hope you enjoyed the movie. I found it to be very insightful and moving. And I thank you for watching this video review. If you did enjoy this video review, uh, you can make sure you get more videos by hitting subscribe, like, but most importantly, that bell icon to get notifications whenever I publish a new video. I wanna say a special thanks to all of my patrons over at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Thanks to all of them for making my videos possible. It is greatly appreciated. If you wanna support me, head on over there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.